Hi everyone, I'm Alex, and for this month's Deep Dive, I want to share with you something that I think is truly special. It's called The Sheep, the Rooster, and the Duck. It's a piece of youth fiction, and uh, it's awesome in all kinds of ways, but I think most importantly, it's awesome because it's based uh, off of real-life events. For example, the very first animals to be launched in a hot air balloon were a sheep, a rooster, and a duck. This happened in France, and these animals were absolutely and utterly famous in their day. And while the real-life animals probably only had that one adventure, the characters in this story get into all kinds of things. And there are other characters, too. For example, Benjamin Franklin is in this book quite a bit, and Franklin was the ambassador to France at that time. And in fact, he was probably there in France when this balloon was launched, and probably saw it go up in the sky. And if you didn't see this particular balloon, he was definitely around to see the very first person get launched into the air. Just to give you a flavor of what this book is like, I'm going to go ahead and read you the first chapter. It's very short. A carriage drawn by a single horse sped down a forest road. The driver, Edward Bancroft, snapped his whip and yelled, Ya, yeah, as he raced deeper into the woods. The darkness enveloped him. Suddenly, Bancroft pulled hard on his reins. The horse reared and kicked, snorted and whinnied. Four men on horseback, pistols drawn, blocked the road before him. Hi, women, exclaimed Bancroft. I carry no money with me. The carriage is empty. See for yourself. The highwayman parted, allowing a fifth rider to join the blockade. He was a large man in a long black cloak, his face hidden by a strange bird-like mask. Edward Bancroft, said the man in the mask. Yes, I am Bancroft. Edward Bancroft. Secretary to Ambassador Benjamin Franklin. Yes, said Bancroft. Edward Bancroft, the English spy. Bancroft said nothing. You will give me the le that letter you carry, Monsieur Bancroft, or else, said the masked man. Two highwaymen took aim. Bancroft reached into his cloak and slowly removed an envelope. Wise choice, Monsieur Bancroft. I thank you for keeping this exchange pleasant. Return to Monsieur Franklin Franklin's house and continue to gather information. But from this night forward, you are not spying for England. You work for me. The masked man approached. He reached for the letter. What can only be described as a fast-moving shadow soared between them, snatching the letter from a startled Bancroft. Bet noir, screamed the highwayman. Get that letter, bellowed the masked man. Pistols fired, but the shadow was small and agile. It flipped and zipped across the road. A highwayman drew his sword. With a flash of steel, the shadow knocked the weapon from his hand. When the dust had settled from the road, the shadow had vanished with the letter. Bet noir, muttered the masked man. We shall meet again very soon. So, nice little cliffhanger there. Uh, there are so many things I like about this book. For starters, it is uh, challenging in terms of vocabulary, but it's also formatted in a way that makes it very readable. It's like a beginning chapter book and also has these passages uh, that are formatted like a graphic novel, and it challenges kids and makes itself accessible in a way that I think is really interesting. I think this book would be just perfect for a reluctant reader. Or I remember when I switched from beginning chapter books to more advanced ones, I remember just really missing all of the illustrations, and this book has it in spades. So that is this month's Deep Dive. Thank you so much for watching.
I'm so excited to tell you about the graphic novel series Mouse Guard by David Peterson. Peterson is a Michigan-based author and illustrator who studied printmaking at EMU. The world of Mouse Guard is a fantastical one where mice live in small towns and they have a medieval-style civilization, carry weapons, speak, and go on many adventures. The bravest of the mice become members of the Mouse Guard who travel from town to town, keeping the kingdom together. In the first book, Fall 1152, we meet three brave members of the Mouse Guard, Kenzie, Saxon, and Liam, and they have uncovered a traitorous plot to attack the base of the Mouse Guard and overthrow the kingdom. Now things continue in winter 1152, where lots of members of the guard are out traveling to get supplies and they have to brave the winter, but they also uncover tunnels deep under the ground left by the weasels of Dark Heather. This is the book that I began with, Legends of the Guard, which is a very special book in the series. It's a compilation where various authors and illustrators have submitted their own stories to the Mouse Guard legend. The setting is a bunch of mice in the inn, and whoever tells the best tale gets their dinner paid for. Finally, we have The Black Axe, which is really a prequel and tells the story of a mystical weapon and adventures far and wide over the water. So those are the books that we have at the library of the Mouse Guard series. They're wonderful. I have to say, as good as the stories are, the art is even better. And I really feel like David's printmaking background shines through in so much of the art. It's also great to see how the art changes and matures from the very first story into the most recent one. So fans of the Gnomes book that was popular when I was a kid, or Dinotopia, or even Redwall, will surely love these books. So that's Mouse Guard by David Peterson. Hi everyone. You might not know this, but June is Environment Month. There are four different days in the month of June where we celebrate different aspects of the earth and the environment. So I wanted to share with you some of our awesome nonfiction books that have something to do with the earth. I picked out four to show you and I'm gonna hold them up and then we'll dive a little deeper into each one of them. First, this brand new book, My Book of Fossils. Second, Sky Wolf's Call, The Gift of Indigenous Knowledge. I'm really excited to show you this one. Next, Road Trip Earth. This is from the creators of the science podcast, Brains On, and they take a cool road trip in this, which we'll learn more about in a moment. And last, this is one of my, uh, a new book from one of my favorite series, Welcome to the Museum is the name of the series, and this is Oceanarium, so we'll see some really cool stuff in here. Let's dive in. Let's start with My Book of Fossils, A Fact-Filled Guide to Prehistoric Life, published by DK. This book is so cool. You can learn all about the different types of fossils. Fossils aren't just uh, body fossils. There's trace fossils that uh, can be fossils of tracks or trails or burrows. There can be fossilized things in amber. And this is a mammoth, a fossilized mammoth that was found in ice. You can learn about how fossils are made you can learn about the fossil record and see the timeline all the way from the first life on Earth up to some of the more recent things that scientists have found fossilized. And of course, we can see all different types of fossils in this book. Plants, animals, 
all sorts. I also liked how there's some images that depict what animals that we found fossils of might have looked like when they were alive. Next, let's look at Sky Wolf's Call, The Gift of Indigenous Knowledge by Eldon Yellowhorn and Kathy Wallinger. This book has so much amazing information in it, including about sacred dances that indigenous people like the Navajo participate in, uh, how indigenous people use controlled burns to maintain their environment and actually help keep their world healthy. And I loved chapter four, indigenous knowledge and food security, which talks about the ways that indigenous people hunt, gather and grow food. You can learn about traditional salmon fishing ways. You can learn about clam gardens. And you can learn about lots of different ways that native people grow food. There's also some cool facts about indigenous legends and how they are involved in the natural world. Next, let's explore Road Trip Earth. Explore our awesome planet from core to shore and so much more. Whether or not you've listened to the Brains On podcast, this is a really fun book to check out. You get to see all the different corners of the world, like underwater, you can learn about chemosynthesis. You can meet the locals, as they say in the book, uh, check out who's chilling in the hydrothermal vents. Later on in the book, we get to visit other types of water, lakes, rivers, creeks, and streams, and learn about the water cycle. And we get to learn about caves and canyons and things like that. And of course, we get to go to the desert too. Lastly, I want to share with you this amazing book, Oceanarium. This is a whole series, as I mentioned, the Welcome to the Museum series. And this book is so big, it really feels like you're almost looking at a museum exhibit when you open it up. So if you're interested in the ocean, this is definitely the book for you. You can see things that might live on the surface to lower all the way to the ocean floor in this cool diagram of oceanic zones. You can learn about the way the tides flow and the currents in the oceans. And of course, we have to learn about different animals that live in oceans, like anemones. Later in the book, we get to learn about cephalopods, like octopus, and crustaceans, and coral reef fish, along with many more. This is a super colorful and informative book that you might want to look into. And there's a whale shark. Enjoy this and the other three books that I talked about today. You guys, I am so in love with your picks this time. Uh, Christopher, I've been loving Mouse Guard forever. I cannot believe we finally had a chance to talk about it. I think that's amazing. Uh, Elizabeth, like I was raised by environmentalists and I did not know that this was environmental environment month. I don't know how that one passed me by for like 42 years, but that, that's, that's just how it shook out. But yeah, you guys picked amazing things. Um, Oceanarium, I love that series so much. Like the illustrations are like, on point all the time. Um, and Mouse Guard, like Christopher's absolutely right. Like the stories are fantastic and they're completely overshadowed by those beautiful illustrations too, so. 
Well, I was so happy because I didn't know about any of the books that the, the two of you had mentioned this episode. And I, I loved the theme of all the environmental books that had come out, Elizabeth. And the historical, I guess you could call it historical fiction, Alex? I'd say so, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was so cool. And that Franklin was there, probably. I thought that was a really cool detail, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I felt I felt the same way about both of your picks. I had never heard of Mouse Guard. I my when Christopher when you started describing it and holding it up, as I was watching, my mouth actually dropped open because the illustrations were so cool, and I loved the um, how one of them the author illustrator actually solicited other story suggestions and then incorporated that into the book. That was a fascinating idea, really cool. And um, Alex, I have always thought that there should be more historical fiction about early hot air balloons because they are such a cool thing. And like, I just have to imagine people at the time were just like in disbelief that they worked. So I'm, I am really excited to check out that book because I, it just seems like a really awesome topic to me. Thanks, thanks. Did they really send those animals up? Oh, they have, yeah, absolutely did. They absolutely did. And there were, there were everybody who was famous in France where it was there to see it. It was right out in front of Versailles, like right in that giant courtyard. Yeah, it was a big to-do. So, so that part of the book is that, at least that part's realistic. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> well, great picks this month of both of you, and I'm glad you enjoyed mine. And um, for viewers, make sure that you tune in to see our next episode. We don't know what uh, everyone's going to pick then. It's always a surprise to us, but um, there's always usually some pretty good picks, so make sure you watch.